Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what I've got whizzing around in front of me is a knight. You can probably tell just by looking at him. <laughs> this fella here, he is a 3D print from Highland Miniatures, and I'll make sure that there's links to all of that in the description. Uh, he is a lot of fun. And with the old world having come out recently, I believe it was just this weekend that uh, pre-orders should have been arriving in people's hands, knights seemed timely. Now, this hasn't turned out quite as I would have liked, mostly because I decided I was going to be difficult and paint white and blue as opposed to black and red, which I did on the foot knight. And I'll make sure there's a link there too. The end result is a little bit more finicky than I might have liked, but it's still done. And I do like how it's turned out. I think an army of these guys would look just fine on the table. So as always, all of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So a very quick note on assembly here, because you'll see I've got the knight already glued to the horse. Um, I did discover during a dry fit that it was still going to be just as easy to reach all of the parts I needed to, whether the knight was attached or not. So I glued him on. Uh, the shield, however, was going to cover quite a lot of detail that would then be very difficult to reach. On the foot knight, it wasn't so difficult, but on this guy, I would rather leave it off. Uh, so you can get behind, as I've demonstrated already, with the foot knight. But I think for a fella that I want to be a little bit nicer looking, it's going to be much easier if we don't glue that on just yet. So it's been primed separately, and I have primed the whole miniature. This is grey from Vallejo, uh, the rattle can version. And something nice and light would be my suggestion. So whether it's ash grey from the army painter, or Citadel's grey sear, light is going to be easier to work with, for sure. Now, unlike the foot knight, the first thing that we're going to do here, of course, is the horse. Of course, of course. What I have, this is Fire Drake. Uh, it is a speed paint color. And I'm going to just quickly blap this over the horse itself. Um, there isn't really a correct color to use here. Of course, painting the horses is really up to how you want them to look. Uh, but because I'm going to be using quite light colors on the uh, barding, and his gear, a dark horse I think is going to work pretty well. So I am, oh gosh, I'm being way more messy than I actually want to be. I was about to say, don't worry about being messy, but maybe that's a bit much. I might swap my brush. <laughs> All right, so after my emergency brush swap, <laughs> that went on pretty well. You'll see that over a light gray, uh, that actually becomes quite a pleasant brown. We've got a few things we are going to do to it later, uh, including giving it little white fluffy socks. But for now, that's fine. We're going to move on at last to painting the armor. And here I'm going to use plate mail metal. Uh, now you could just as easily use pretty much any silvery color you want. You might even want to swap uh, for like mail versus uh, plate, you know, make them look a little bit different to one another. Uh, but for our purposes, I'm going to use the same metal for pretty much everything. Now this don't need to be terribly careful with. The only thing you don't want to hit is the horse that we've already painted. Now you'll notice along the uh, leather bits that will be holding on the barding and what have you, I haven't done the little silver bits on those yet because there's not a lot of point. First, we've actually got to paint the leather. Now I am going to use leather brown for this, uh, but I'm only going to paint the leather that's on the horse. The uh, leather that the knight himself is wearing, I'm going to do in a different color. And I'm pretty certain, looking at the miniatures, that the Games Workshop ones are done with Mournfang Brown for this. So if you want to match their color scheme, you can try that. Okay, now comes the interesting part where we actually get to lay down the heraldry. Now, as always, I suggest that the color that covers better, do that as the second one that you apply. So I'm going to start by painting in the white. Now, I have here Corax White. And I know that some folks don't get along with it, um, but what I do recommend is when you first open it, drop a couple of agitators in there and uh, a little bit of medium, and it will keep its flow. I mean, look at that. That is white in one go. Uh, so what I'm going to do, working quickly on this area, I'm going to paint this side white, and on the back here, this bit's going to be white as well as this part of the night. I want the white and blue to be left to right from whichever angle you're viewing from. Uh, unfortunately, from the front, it means this bit's going to be blue 
and then white over here, but eh, we'll cope. So away we go. Couple of coats of white I think are going to be necessary. Now after two coats, you'll see the difference between the white that I've laid down and the gray. Now, the most important thing I can suggest when you're painting white, no matter which brand it is you're using, is to work with the largest brush that you can control and try and keep your brush moving in the same direction as you're applying it. As well, once you put a layer down, move away. You know, let it dry because white is one of those colors where if you put paint down and it's not completely dry before you try and put another layer on top, you're gonna get awful, awful bitty garbage floating through your white, and you don't want that. Now for the blue cloth, I'm going to use Crystal Blue from the Army Painter. This one here, this is the Fanatic version, so it is a recent update. Uh, but the original version of the uh, Crystal Blue war paint also covered quite well, so if that's what you've got, you shouldn't struggle too much. See this one covers really nicely. So I'm just going to quickly blast over the blue cloth in the same way, slowing down once I reach the areas where I've got the white the way that I want it to look. Now that is a lovely blue. There are a couple of spots, particularly up around his helmet, where I've been a little careless, and I have splodged on to the silver or the white, but that won't take long to fix up later on. As much as possible, try and keep your cleanup stage to last, so that you're not always dipping back into old paint. What I've got now, I have oak brown, and I'm going to use this as the leather on the night. It's a little bit darker than uh, leather brown, ironically. It has a slightly more reddish tint to it, so I really like it for, you know, worn but cared for personal leather. So up around here, his leather straps on his gear. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a little bit more fiddly because now we're starting to get to the stage where we're essentially tidying up as we go. So little, little latches and what have you on his armor. There's quite a bit of this to do. Take your time. Uh, but don't worry, as always, if you do make a bit of a mess. Now I have just realized that this stage would probably have been easier if I did it before just painting that leather. So bear that in mind. <laughs> what I have is matte black. And I'm going to paint in the scabbard. And to be quite honest, I think that might be about it. Um, there's not a lot that I want to be a pure black on this guy, so this should be nice and quick. Okay, now I'm going to spin him around, and I have here Ancient Stone. I'm going to use this to paint on the rope that is holding on the little charm dangling under his armpit there. And also there's this little bit of flappy cloth around his waist. I'm going to be a little more careful and do that off camera, but this is the color I'm going to use. A nice generic just off-bone sort of color. Now this might be a stage where you want to carry on using the ancient stone, uh, but I am going to use here bony matter. Uh, this is a speed paint, and I'm going to just blast some of this over the hooves. Now I'm going to switch gears slightly, and I'm going to paint the little lion on his helmet. This is a good idea if you're painting a whole bunch of knights that you want to be individuals. Uh, what I've got here, this is Ungor Flesh, and I'm going to paint in the lion. Um, quite commonly, these little heraldic devices, they would have been painted to actually match the animals that they were representing. So you know, don't feel you just have to limit yourself to bronze or steel or what have you. Go ahead and have some fun with it. And we'll paint in his mane and the little tuft on his tail in a minute. But first, what I've got is Retributor Armor. We're going to start painting in those little golden details here and there. Now you can use pretty much any gold color that you like. Um, Army paint is greedy gold, will be quite a good one. I'm using Retributor Armor mostly because it is a slightly more muted, um, almost brownish, brassy kind of gold than uh, greedy gold would be by contrast. So this I like. Okay, now at this point I'm going to go back to plate mail metal and start doing in some of the steel details that I had missed from earlier. I'm also going to start using this as the cleanup. So from this point, I'm really just doing my tidying, any last details. So any other colors where I have splurged over, like up on the, the uh, saddle there, or any joints that I've missed, I'm now going to tidy that up and get all of this ready to shade them. 
Once you've done all your tidy up and that has had time to dry and settle, it's time to shade the miniature. Now what I've mixed up here is half and half Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium. Um, if you use the Agrax Earthshade straight from the pot, it's going to be so dark. Um, it's still going to appear quite dark going on, but the medium is going to help it flow and it will look a bit more subtle once it's dried. So rather than splurging across the whole miniature, Try and work in areas at a time because it'll give you a lot more control. And uh, as you apply this, you want to be able to guide where it's going to end up. So on his helmet and on his lion here, this is not too difficult. But as you get to the bigger, flatter areas, like on his cape here, and I'll do it on the white as the example. Try and keep your brush moving in the same direction as you apply this. And you want to have essentially too much on your brush because what I see a lot of folks doing is using a small brush with just a little bit on it at a time and you're going to have the shade start essentially drying before it's in position. And that is when you end up with those awful little streaky bits uh, which don't settle properly into the recesses and you kind of miss out on the whole point of using the shade in the first place. So the same too goes for the, uh, the capey bits that the horse is wearing. Uh, but I'm going to finish off the knight first and then start on the horse, following the same principle of trying to work in areas at a time. So I'm now going to finish off applying this over the entire miniature and not forgetting he has a shield. <laughs> we'll see what this looks like once it's all dry in about half an hour. Once that's dried, you're going to have something that looks like this. And that white in particular, <laughs> that's not what we want. But the shading itself is spot on. And what we've done is taken the slightly bluish tint that Corax White has and turned it essentially a muddy brown. So what I'm turning to, instead of going to white, is Pallid Witch Flesh. And what I'm going to do is use this to go over some of the areas I want to be a little bit lighter and tidier, while leaving that grimy brown stuff in the recesses. Now, I've probably thinned that down a little bit more than I should have. Now what you can use this for is to build up a slightly cleaner looking white, but without it looking weird and incongruous with that bluish tint that the uh, Corax white again would have. So away we go, painting all the white bits with pallid witch flesh. Now here on the back, I am applying a second thin coat because you'll see the first on this side is a little bit patchy. So take your time with it and slowly build out the shape of the fabric that you want it to look like. Um, if you're finding that your paint isn't covering at all, then you're adding too much water. Um, if it's not flowing off your brush smoothly like this, then you're not adding enough. Experimentation is the key here. Now that will take a couple of passes, and it will take, I find, a bit of practice until you find a method that you're happy with using. It does get much easier as you go though, and luckily, by contrast, the blue is going to be much simpler. I'm just going back straight away to crystal blue, and uh, as you'll see, this covers much, much easier. And we're going to do the same thing with the blue, just tidy it up a bit, and leave the recesses with that shaded griminess. Now with that blue tidied up, we are going to commit the Heresy of Heresies. And I'm actually going to glue the shield on into place before we do some of the other highlighting. Reason being is it's going to keep you from being tempted to overdo it. <laughs> it's going to get really easy to do a whole lot of work that you will genuinely just never see. And if you're into being that specific and that precise, then go ahead, do it, and glue the shield on later. But I'm painting gaming miniatures. I want to get these on the table relatively quickly. So a dab of glue on the back there. You'll see my grimy little bit where I haven't uh, even primed it. And I'm going to do this off camera because I do not have enough hands. <laughs> now don't let me tell you not to paint something. But hopefully that also makes it clear why I'm just not going to. All the same, these guys are going to be the centerpiece of your army. You know, your knights, they are the cool guys. So I'm going to take things a little bit further First of all, with some white scar, just to accentuate some of the creases and high points in that white. And then with some Lothan blue, I'm going to do the same thing on the blue. In a lot of places on a horse like this, you're going to be able to use the edge of your brush 
and just slow down as you come near to things like the chain and what have you. That way you don't have to worry too much about using the very tip and getting a perfectly straight line. Now for the lighter leather on the straps and reins and what have you, what I've got here, this is Monster Brown. And now this is the current Warpaints version. Uh, mostly because I haven't got the other one yet, so we'll make do. Well, make do. It's obviously doing the job, isn't it? And then for the darker brown, the oak brown that we used as the leather on the night, we're actually going to use leather brown to highlight. So this you will not need to do a huge amount of because there's not really very much of it still showing uh, depending on how your shield is sitting. Okay, now we're going to take some deep gray and put that down for a second. I'm going to very lightly dry brush the tail for this. So take most of that off on a bit of kitchen towel. And uh, I'm not too worried at this stage if it ends up going a little overboard because I'm not that fussed about painting tails, honestly. Now previously I have matte varnished miniatures like this as a final stage, but I want to show you a slightly different way of doing it. If we varnish it after doing the decals but before highlighting the metal, what we can do is use the uh, the untouched metallic highlights to make that look a little bit shinier. So first off I'm going to pop the shield, sorry the transfer rather, on his shield and then I'm going to matte varnish him. So I'm going to do that off camera because it's just a flat transfer, it's nice and quick. Now that varnish is going to make a world of difference to your metallics. So we're now going to highlight them and I think they're going to look much better afterwards. So what I have is a little bit of Liberator Gold and we're going to start by adding just some edges to, funnily enough, the gold bits. And then finally what I've got, this is steel. Uh, this is from the Vallejo Model Air range. And a very close equivalent to this would be Stormhost Silver. So if you can't get your hands on this, it'll work just as well. But all I'm going to do is just catch some of the edges of the metallic bits. And because we haven't varnished our highlights, they are going to ding just a little bit more at the edges. So I'm going to go around now, all of the metal there, metallic bits rather, the metallic layer. And uh, once I'm done with that, I'll finish off the base. Recipe for that one will be in the description. And let's get a look at our knight when he is all finished. And so there at last, our knight is complete. And I wish I had a slightly better sheet of decals for these guys, because that one's all right, but it's not quite what I would have wanted. Anyhow, I'm rambling slightly. That is done. And like I mentioned at the outset, there are a few details that didn't really come out the way that I would have hoped. But end result is something that I could still quite happily put on the table. Uh, in particular, doing something of this scale with white is always going to be a little bit tricky. So just because I wanted to be contrary and do something opposite to black and red, well, I've bitten my own nose off for that, so the little bit of extra work I've had to do, yeah, okay, <laughs> I had that coming. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Your support means the world, folks. I would not be doing this without you. And any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.